Hello, this week's copy edit is a bit of an experiment, actually. I wanted to do something different. I've done reviews of emails. I've done reviews of dog trainer, homepages, service pages, SEO stuff. And they've all been pages that have been submitted to me by people who are already working on this stuff. And I thought, how could I share something new that we've not done before? Um, that might be interesting in a different way and more helpful because we might be covering stuff that I haven't covered anywhere else. So here's what we're going to do today. I am going to open up a Google tab and I am going to search dog trainer and I'm going to pick a random location. Do you know what? It's saying dog trainer Bristol. Let's do that. We'll go with dog trainer Bristol. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. This is going to be a lesson in SEO and it's going to be a dual lesson. So the first thing we're going to do is pick the website that's at the top of Google or my Google search for dog trainer Bristol. And we're going to have a look at what they're doing well in terms of their SEO on this homepage. I'm only going to look at the homepage. I'm not going to review the entire website because that would be ridiculously long. Then I'm going to go back to the search and we're going to go a few pages in and we're going to have a look at a website there and how, what they could do on that website to improve and push them up the rankings. The point of this is that, you know, ranking on Google, what does that mean? Ideally you want to be in the top, at least on page one of the search results for the thing that you want to be found for the keyword that you want to be found for. Um, and ideally in positions one to three. So if I click on the ones in position one to three should be that they've got their SEO in place. And so looking at that will help us see, what that looks like. Then when we look at one that hasn't, we'll take what we've learned from this website and see how you can apply it to the website that's currently buried. Um, and hopefully, my hope, and let me know in the comments below if this, if this works or not, is that it will show you the tweaks that you could make on your website to push you up the rankings in Google. So let's go. Here's the first one. I don't know this person. I've had nothing to do with this website. I've just typed in a random area to see what we get. Okay, so if you've seen any of these before, you'll see I use this SEO tool to help me see what they've got in their meta title, which is what shows up in Google when somebody's searching. And so she's got the, what did I search? Dog training, Bristol. Yeah, she's got those both near the beginning of her meta title. We need to have our keyword and if you're local, your area within that. And you'll find that on your website, depending on your platform, it will be like meta title, title tag, SEO just title, something like that, be in the SEO section of your website. And then she's got her meta description, which is more about earning the click through than it is about SEO. Her title, her H1, which is her title is actually just her name, which is not very good SEO. So that's interesting that she's ended up here. Um, and her other subheadings are also not including any of the things that I'd recommend. So that's interesting, isn't it? Let's keep scrolling and see how she might have managed to get onto page one with a website that doesn't really have much SEO on it. I'm, so, I'm going to guess literally just by what I'm seeing as I scroll this page that having dynamic content in terms of videos has boosted her SEO. She's got so many videos on this page. Curious. So these, it just goes to show that these things are not always going to be what you expect. And that's why I kind of wanted to do an off the cuff experiment. If you'd asked me to do a review of this website, I would say that there are a lot of things to change. <laughs> I've got no links to the services on this page. I'm getting taken off down rabbit holes, watching loads of random videos. Um, um, you know, I've searched for dog trainer in Bristol. What I want to do is get to probably this page or this page, right? The training page. I want a dog trainer. Um, and again, those pages are not very well populated. Very, very interesting. I wonder how I'm going to go back to the search because I'm just a bit bamboozled by that really. We can't learn anything positive from that page. <laughs> How has that got there? Well, she's, you know what we can learn? She changed. This is a brilliant thing to learn. 
She has recently changed her title, as in dog training in Bristol. That's the only thing she's changed recently by the looks of it. I can't promise that. Um, and that tiny change has made a big difference to her ranking. Um, I'm going to look at the next one to see if that gives us any other lessons. But the first lesson is right now, go to your website and do your meta title and your meta description <laughs> and make sure you put your target keyword and your area in it. In the description below, I'll, I'll drop a link to a blog that will give you a formula like that for that. That will help you. Let's have a look at the next position and see if they are doing a better job with the rest of their SEO outside of their um, meta title. Okay, cool. Again, a page that doesn't have a huge amount of copy. So let's see what is she doing right? So we haven't got the meta title done on this one. And we haven't, we've got separation related problems. We've got some descriptions of problems in the headings, um, including barking, which would help Google understand that this is about dogs, cognitive decline. Um, so yeah, really the, again, the only, harsh to say, the only good SEO on here really is the subheaders and she's in position too. Now, obviously I'm doing this in a very lighthearted and quick fashion. I've not done a full SEO audit of these websites. So I have to say as a disclaimer, there will likely be other things at play, things like backlinks and other content on their websites that might be, um, impacting on them landing where they are. But pretty much neither of those websites at the top of Google, below the Google map pack, um, are particularly nailing SEO. I might look at one more just for fun. We said top three, right? So let's look at the top three. Mutty Professor. Now, I don't know this woman personally, but I follow her on social media and I love her stuff. And this is the first one on that page that I'm like, immediately, we've got a great website. Bristol's most highly qualified dog training and dog, dog behaviorist team. So we've got Bristol and dog training in the H1 in the title. Yeah, brilliant. We've got based in the heart of Bristol. We've got um, a, head, a subheader that says educational material to help you with your dog. We've got a header that says dog training classes in Bristol. This is what I would expect to see for somebody who's on the at the top of the first page on Google. This person is absolutely nailing their on-page SEO for their homepage. It's brilliant. Great image, brilliant headline, nice CTA buttons to get you straight to the services. I don't have to watch 15 videos of different things that you've done. Um, I can learn more about you here. We've got testimonials. Services are all really easy to find and they've got brilliant subheaders explaining what they are and including the location. This is how you do a brilliant homepage and nail your SEO. Um, so five stars plus for the Mutty Professor, not just for their website, but for all your social media content and everything you do. Cool. This is an interesting experiment. Let's go. I don't know what this is going to be like now, given the people in position one and two had um, such poor um, SEO. Let's pick one at random. I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to go on. Oh, no, not a sponsored one. All right, I'm going to go on this one. All right, all right. Now, this is an about page rather than the home page. So that could be part of the reason why it's further down. Let's open up our thing and look at the SEO. Okay, so we're leading with about us, which I would change. We've got puppy and gun dog training classes, which is brilliant, and the target area. Now, this page wasn't targeting what I searched for anyway, right? I searched for dog trainer, and that is not what they're targeting on this page. But ironically, what I'd usually recommend as your target keyword for your about page is actually dog trainer. So your homepage will probably be dog training, your classes and one-to-one -one pages would be classes, dog training, puppy classes, etc., which leaves dog trainer for your about page. So if I was optimizing this page for SEO, I'd have dog trainer instead of about us, I'd have Bath, Bristol and Somerset, and then I probably wouldn't have any room left in if I was staying under 60 characters for my um, business name. I'd reduce this down, but um, Google will do that automatically anyway, so not a huge thing. My title would be 
meet Chris, Christine Collins, your Bristol dog trainer or something like that. You could write something better. Um, I don't know this person, so I can't write anything that it, it aligns to their business. But essentially, my title, I would want to include dog trainer and Bristol in it. And I can write whatever I like around that that speaks into who I am and what I'm about and my kind of training. Um, in her subheader, she's got some reference to her dog stuff. Oh, I didn't want to download those. Oopsie. Um, yeah, let's have a look at the rest of the page. So this page is talking mainly about gun dogs and her, achie her achievements and qualifications as a dog trainer um, and her achievements with her own dogs. Um, so what would I do to improve that SEO wise? I have something about your local dog trainers. See, check out your local dog trainer, Christine's qualifications as your subheader rather than achievement and qualifications. So we're getting that dog trainer and location in again. Um, and I would have, oh, she's done, she's actually already nailed this. So I might add in a subheader here, um, areas covered for dog training as a subheader so that Google's understanding what's in this section. Cause she's already got her areas in here, which is brilliant. She's got great call to actions over to her pages, a lovely footer, um, no address or areas on the footer. So I would add those. All right. That's an interesting experiment. I didn't know how it would go. I'd love to know whether there was anything remotely helpful in that for you. I think my biggest takeaway is just how powerful doing your meta titles and descriptions is. I mean, that, that website that in the first position, that's, that's the only thing really that they'd got right with their SEO. Um, and yet they were on the first page of Google, which is pretty impressive, right? I would though hold up position, the one that we found in position three, the Mutty Professor as the perfect example of not only nailing the SEO piece, um, but the conversion piece. So remember the SEO, search engine optimization, is about attracting people to your website. Conversion is about actually getting them to take that next step. That might be booking or buying your thing, it might be inquiring, subscribing, subscribing, um, but they're actually taking an action. And what I would suggest, and I might be wrong, you know, who knows, the person who owns that first website might watch this and say, actually, Ricky, people love watching my 25 videos of um, getting to know me and what I'm all about, and they do convert. Um, so I might be wrong, but I would, I would suspect that visitors to the Mutty Professor's website um, would be more likely to get to the service pages quickly, learn enough about how that person can help um, and be ready to take the next step. Um, so I will link to a couple of useful videos below that are a bit more structured than this one. And I'd love to know if you think, should I do something like this again or just stick to doing structured content? Let me know, I'd love to hear. See you soon.